this evening I published a circuit uh, where I have told about how to solve uh, important components out of all kinds of all old uh, electronic circuits. Here the, the board by the way where all these components were mounted on. I've talked about it, told about the capacitors, etc. etc. So uh, I wanted to do another test, a second test, with my capacitor tester. And that capacitor tester is on my YouTube channel. It's here. Uh, you have to say connect the capacitor to these two electrodes. You can solder it in or you can push down on the two contacts uh, that capacitor and then you can read the frequency because it is in an oscillator circuit. So the capacitance value is directly related to the oscillation frequency. That's very say simple way to test capacitors and especially important for the capacitors that are on a very low value. And then I mean for instance here 3 picofarad, 12 picofarad, 33 picofarad. Uh, these values are so tiny that with often with other types of uh, capacitor testers you cannot measure it. I know of course you can find via Ali all kinds of sophisticated uh, capacitor testers, component testers, they can test everything, that's what they say. Uh, transistors, capacitors, coils, etc. etc. Uh, they work via a say via software etc etc but this is more or less the classical way classical radio theory not working with software or a computer program and um, I don't have hard feelings of course about these very sophisticated uh, component testers they can work very good uh, in my case they worked for approximately two years such a sophisticated component tester worked for approximately two years and then suddenly it stopped so I had to say move back to the more classical uh, circuits that in a certain way always work because uh, there's no computer inside you have to take your conclusions yourself. You are the computer. With the knowledge, of course, with the radio theory. Anyway, um, again, here's an oscillator inside. Oscillator inside. That oscillator frequency depends on the capacitor value. And here I have a few capacitors. Uh, this one is out of that unit halogen lamp test, sorry, halogen lamp transformer dimmable. Here is another capacitor that is um, 1 and 5, so 1500 picofarad. This is 100 nanofarad, so 0 0.1 microfarad. And here another capacitor of 10 nanofarad. Say we have here more or less in a certain way a kind of uh, not universal but in a certain way overall universal range. Switch on the, the scope now and I have connected to the output of my uh, capacitor tester the scope. The best idea from this scope is that it is also a frequency counter. Very good. And the most important thing that I uh, found out today is 
uh, I have indicated here that it works on 18 volts and well you have to use exactly 18 volts so kind of warning when you want to use this circuit the link is in the text box exactly 18 volts it's now here out of my power supply to get the right voltages uh, you can say well the uh, best idea is here to use a, a voltage stabilizer on 18 volts and supply the circuit with say 20 volts 24 volts well that's a surely a good idea perhaps I'm going to do that anyway um, the oscillator without any capacitor capacitance here oscillates and here you see the frequency that is say kind of needle pulse and I want to focus my camera on that this kind of needle pulse and I'm now going to connect the 100 nanofarad just the 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor parallel to the electrodes we why does my why does it suddenly stop well that's that has to do with my scope put on the light again uh, tells everything about when you say you want to do these measurements this is say the best thing to do uh, put the scope to another uh, time base here we have that frequency that the uh, capacitor generates I now don't see anything on the screen but I push the auto set that's always say a kind of escape with this oscilloscope and we have now uh, 80 2 hertz you can you can read it on the screen you see the waveform that this capacitor of 100 nanofarad makes in this circuit of course uh, don't talk about the uh, say uh, the time ratios etc etc 83 hertz and when we look on my table on 400 nanofarad it is 84 hertz so that's okay again most important thing supply this circuit out of exactly 18 volts to get a good indication of your capacitors at least when you use the same table as I did uh, second experiment 1 and 5 1500 picofarad that's not much but anyway let's see and try etc and now connect it and here we have the waveform and the frequency again we don't have the frequency kind of perhaps way that my scope doesn't understand what's happening here but anyway of course a scope doesn't have a uh, brains like me so again uh, auto set push the auto set and let's see what happens well here we have the, the waveform that this capacitor generates the capacitor of 1500 picofarad and it is 760 hertz let's look on the table here where must that be 1 and 5 well uh, 1 n is 726 hertz 732 hertz well let's look again does that fit Let's try 702 hertz is 1 and 5. Seven, 
3, 2 hertz is in my table and I measure 7, 7, 2 hertz. Well, that's a little bit high. Higher, anyway. Has to do, of course, with the properties of this circuit. Can have to do with the tolerances. I don't want to do deep dive in all, into all these problems. But I think you have with my circuit a quite good indication about uh, the capacitance values in picofarads or nanofarads regarding the capacitors. <coughs> Ten nanofarad again. Let's see. What's this? 10 nanofarad is 462 hertz. Let's look again. 462 hertz. 10 nanofarad. Uh, here it is 444 four, four hertz. So it differs, differs, but in a certain way, like I have to say, the 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 uh, the deviation, the tolerance is quite high. So uh, the only thing that I can tell is take your own conclusions. You can make this circuit, test capacitors with it, make your own, say, uh, frequency table, and then uh, use this circuit in practice. I think it's still a good circuit. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.